if now she a little bit cray cray, you know, when get married, right, she's gonna be even more cray cray. Yes. And welcome to another episode of Zula Answers. I'm Pika. And I am Amanda. Yes. In today's episode, mm. we'll be talking about relationship expectations. Okay. Uh, I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. Mm-hmm. When I was your age, mm-hmm. my relationship expectations are like completely different from what I have now. Okay. You yeah. say your last time one first. So last time, right, when I see guys, I'll be like, oh my god, he could play like basketball. Oh my god, I see athletic. Although I'm not even athletic, like I, I don't know what is the mismatch going on there, but <laughs> I like athletic guys. Um I like the big muscle. Okay. No, none of that like applies anymore. I think the expectations become more um non-tangible. But actually I think all of those expectations, I had them when I was secondary school. Uh-huh. See, I'm a grown woman now. I have adult uh, mindset. <laughs> Now my expectation is communication is important. You see, it's quite wow, mature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. mature. Mm. But if they handsome, also good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they must accept your other seven boyfriends. Ah right? yes, they must know that they come after seven, so that eighth place. Ah yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So all of these confessions are submitted via the Google Forms, right? Mm. So I'm a bit excited to see what are the problems that people nowadays face. I think one very common one would be things like unrealistic expectations. Yes. Like they want, must be 1.85, must earn $10,000 a month. I got. Must be handsome. Got here before. Or, or another one, right? Not so, not so like materialistic. The expectation is like, I expect them to have the same mindset as me, but I'm not going to tell them what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot like as, You mean they have to be mind readers? Correct. What, what do they have to be? I don't understand mm. Okay Yes Okay so shall we jump to Confession number one okay. I'm very scared like, Very scary yeah, these people I am accepted <laughs> First confession Title Choosing between university Work and relationship Submitted by Jay <laughs> Justin <laughs> <laughs> Jonko <laughs> Thanks for taking time out to read this. Much love. Recently, I have just finished my national service and am currently starting out on my first full-time career. Oh, okay. Good for you. During NS, I was in a dilemma on whether I should finish my education by going into uni as I was not sure if I would do well. On the other hand, I have a girlfriend who is approaching her early 30s while I am on the younger side in my mid-20s. I feel like going to uni studies would delay her further and there would be issues like high-risk pregnancy in the future. (laughs) Wow, just thinking quite far ahead. Okay. Financially, I'm able to pay off my uni fees should I choose to study, but that would mean I'm unable to start a family with her now with no financial stability. Should I choose to work, which I am already doing, I fear the lack of degree might punish me in the long run as the paper alone opens up more paths for your choosing. My girlfriend is really understanding and says she's supportive of me whatever I choose to do, but that also gives me the pressure of making the wrong choice. I am now in a crossroad dilemma where there is hardly a happy ending for both scenarios. <laughs> I would love to hear from a third person's view. Wow, okay, that's a lot to unpack. Um, this person here, he has three things that is going on for him right now. Uh, three things competing for his attention. Mm. Relationship, education and occupation. Okay, first and foremost, I can't really give like objective advice, number one, because I don't know what he studies. Mm. If you're studying to be a doctor, then yeah, like, you have to go uni. Like. If yeah. not, I don't know which clinic you're going to open at the roadside there. <laughs> but if you're in something that's a bit more hands-on, like for example, if you're in the media industry, I would mm. say that experience counts a lot more than your paper qualities. But then, actually, when I look at it, it's not that difficult because oh. in the first place the partner really accept like no matter where you go i'm supportive of you mm. so that's like one problem down i feel like he doesn't actually have to pick one over the other yeah. okay right now they all can be like same level mm. right? so i think there are actually a lot of other like ways that he can do all three at the same time also can if he got the will you yeah. don't have to be like the full time also he can yeah. go work then and he work then he can balance with the partner then he can do part-time uni and I... Okay, if you ask me, right? Mm. I personally feel that he has... From what he is saying over here, he has found quite a, an understanding girlfriend. Yeah. Because I wouldn't say that many girls would be able to 
wait for so long because there's always like a bit of a pressure of like oh you want to get married but I don't know what age yeah. that sort of thing the fact that now she's approaching her early 30s but yet she's still willing to wait for him yeah um I think he should acknowledge that his girlfriend <laughs> is a keeper to yeah. be honest to be very honest uh, yeah so yeah. number one Mr. J please treasure your girlfriend whatever choice you make please put her as part of your choice the best thing that Mr. J can do is just maybe try to talk it out with your partner first and like try to see together what is the best solution for the both of you. In your 20s, I would say that there's always this dilemma of like, should I choose my relationship or should I choose my education or should I, cho- should I go out to work, that mm. sort of thing. For me personally, I feel that it's not necessarily you have to have one or the other. It doesn't mean that if you go to study, you cannot have a relationship. Of course, to juggle multiple parts of um, your life like this in your mid-20s, it's not going to mm. be easy. Um, but I really do believe that you can do it at the same time. And especially the fact that you have a very understanding partner. Hashtag girl boss era. Oh, wow. Oh, oh I like this. <laughs> I like this controversy. The, the previous one is too wholesome. Mm. No, no, okay. no. So this one is titled my girlfriend expects too much from me. Submitted <gasps> by K. Okay. Wow. I've been together with my girlfriend for one year and she hasn't been taking me seriously. She never talks about the problem and just ignores it. Oof. Whenever we have serious talk, she just listens and says she'll change but never does. Over time, she is becoming more spoiled and just expects me to do things for her. Example, carry her things for her, help her buy things. She always gets mad at me if I don't reply her within a, a few minutes or when I'm playing games with my friends. She would say things like, the game is more important than me, I get it, you don't have to talk to me. Also, she tends to avoid going on dates with me alone. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) Okay, in case her relative sees us, so whenever we do go out, it's always in a group setting. I'm getting tired in this relationship. She would just brush away the problems and not listen to my point of view on things. What should I do to salvage this relationship? (laughs) Wait, there's so many things here. Okay. Obviously, something that she needs to improve on is the fact that she never talks about the problem and she mm. just ignores it. Yeah. So this will snowball and then one day somebody will explode in the relationship. Yeah. Probably him. Then, whenever we have serious thoughts, she just listens and says she'll change but never does. Over time, she is becoming more spot and expects me to do things for her. Depends on what kind of things she expects him to do. Yeah. Okay, carry her, th- carry her things for help her, her or help things. her buy things. Uh, depends to what extent. Mm. I think carrying things for girlfriend is not that bad like hey, you help me carry my bag a bit okay what mm-hmm. right then it gets worse like, actually it continues yeah. uh, to she doesn't even want to go like on dates alone <laughs> actually what is a date with other people that's not even a date anymore man. I think that's an outing a <laughs> uh, um, uh, group coaching <laughs> and then she says that she avoids because she's scared that her relatives see them wait how old are they <laughs> <laughs> okay if you are like 15 or 16 Then maybe okay. you scared Your mother okay. find out okay, okay maybe If you are 25, 26 It's like Tiger mom is it I don't know Until like hey, you, you cannot get married Eh hey, you cannot have A partner until you're married Kind of vibes Oh Okay but that's a bit extreme yeah But if she avoids Going on dates With him alone For fear of The relative seeing them Is it she's Ashamed of him Is she Hiding something else Maybe <laughs> But okay Overall This one is Clearly, there is um, a difference in the relationship expectations. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know what the other person wants, but this person definitely wants just like a casual, like a normal relationship, right? Just like, I love my girlfriend and my girlfriend loves me. But then this other one, like, I don't know, what is her love language actually? What is going on here? Yeah, especially he says that she will get mad at him if he doesn't reply her within a few minutes or when he's playing games with his friends. Mm. I think this couple is quite young. Mm. To be honest Because these are the kind of things That matter to you yeah. When you are younger Yeah. Now at my age right If Justin doesn't reply me On a work weekday I know he's at work lah But give him some space I would say To play games with his friends mm. uh, Especially if he's being honest with you And saying Hey I'm going to play games with my friends yeah. That means he's being honest with you and you know you know what he's doing. So give him that mutual respect. Mm. Uh, I think the problem with her is that maybe she's a little bit too dependent on him. Like she probably like created her entire life oh on yeah. him already. Mm. So like she she cannot like not be with him anymore. She's mm. like too clingy already. Yeah. Her attachment style maybe, I don't know. Her attachment style, I think, is more of like the anxious attachment style. Like, you uh, need to be there for the person forever. Ah, uh, yes. You know what I mean? Like, you you, you cannot have 
your own lives. Right. You cannot have your own hobbies. Right. You cannot have your own lives because both of you are in a relationship and you have to be in this relationship together. You have yeah. to do everything together, which I feel in the long run is not sustainable at all because you don't have lives of mm. your own outside of the relationship. The main thing that you can do if you want to like salvage the relationship is you're going to be like upfront about all of the issues that she has right now. Mm. Put, it, it, put it all on the table, okay? Miss ma'am, first of all, what the heck is going on? <laughs> this, 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 like that. And set the expectations for both of you. Mm. What is it that the both of you want? And if you talk to her about this mm. and she doesn't accept it and there is no improvement, right? Then maybe you have to e- re-evaluate whether you want to be with this person in the long run. So like I said, she's, okay, like we've mentioned, right, mm. she's probably a little bit, uh, this is probably a younger couple. So I guess there's still a lot more room for improvement. There's still a lot more time for them to like change, right? I think if they are able to communicate their expectations to one another and like just lay down the rules, no, not rules, like what they both want, see whether they can compromise. I would say that I rather you say it mm. instead of you know um, bottling it up, right. and then suddenly one day you explode, or like one day somebody explodes. Yeah, I think there's still hope because like in the first place, uh, Mr. K right, was willing to do everything and like tolerate all of this mm. so far. So I guess right, if he just tells her how he feels, mm. I think she will be able to accept. Right? To be honest, because like, wow, actually he's quite nice. He do this for me. He carry my things. He like tolerate when I scold him, uh, never let him play games. So maybe I should just tone it down a little bit. You know, there is still time. There's still a chance for her to change. Yeah, let's hope that Miss, <laughs> Miss K, K yeah. Miss, potential Mrs. K will be able to uh, figure things out by herself. Mm. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> Fight on Mr. K. Okay. Oh, oh dear. Mm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Title, How Can I Find The One? Submitted by Karen. <laughs> oh, suddenly we have ASMR. Okay. Mm. So I am 20 years old this year and I have never had a boyfriend before, but I'm really okay with it. I'm not actively searching, but if it comes, then it comes. Kind of attitude, you know. Yeah, I know most people have this kind of attitude because they don't want to like put pressure on themselves, which is good, which is good. Okay. But that said, I do have crushes and EC. EC is I can do. Oh, I thought executive condominium. <laughs> But that said, I do have crushes and EC on people even if I don't act on them and also I don't know how. (laughs) A lot of guys I tend to like are ones that we are never close enough to talk and spend time with personally but they are still really nice and can talk when we actually do see each other. I tend to also like guys that are very driven or passionate that don't really have time for other things like relationships and they are quite indifferent although nice to people or girls around them and i really like the respect they have for girls to keep that distance but that being said i'm included lol (laughs) but i don't know this indifference and distance is also what makes me like them but it doesn't get me anywhere so i am supposed to just change my type or like how can i subtly try to get to know them better without being sus or weird because it's a school environment right and mutual friends are everywhere OP, this person, Karen, she is the person who sits there and waits for Prince Charming to fall down from That's the sky right. because she doesn't want to make the first move. I think she is closing too many doors for herself mm. when she does this kind of thing. Like, when you have this sort of, like, type, uh, like, this is the only thing that I want or, like, very narrow-minded mm. now. I think what I'm seeing here is a bit of lack of proactivity because mm. she see, like, oh, I think, I assume lah, I think uh, this person is too busy, too mm. driven, no time for relationship. I think that's not really very true yeah. because you can be very busy, you can be very driven, but you can also have a relationship. Otherwise, there'll be even more single people in, in this world. She also pointed out this thing where she said that we're never close enough for us to talk and spend time with personally. But then that is kind of like also your responsibility if you want to get closer, yeah. then you should go ahead and, you know, make the move or so. Yeah, I mean, you can just start off by being closer friends with them. You don't have yeah. to go up to them and be like, okay, hey, please take me now. <laughs> I'll meet you tomorrow at 8pm. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Right? You can just like, you know, slide in a bit more as uh, close friends, mm. get to know them a bit better. Yeah. I think a lot of people approach dating with the mindset, right, that, uh, okay, like, I want to be attached. Mm. I want to find a date. Mm. Means I must go and find a date. Like, <laughs> like my, my motive right now is to date. I'm, mm. I need to know you for the purpose of dating. Right. Like, I don't think about being friends first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think about, you know, whether I can be friends with you first before dating you. They just go in for the kill and be like, I need to date you. 
<laughs> I like you. So you must date me. So of course the person will be a bit, you know, I want to get to know you a bit better first mm. as a friend. Can I be friends with you first maybe? Then we can progress onto dating. You know what yeah. I mean? She mentioned that she's in school and she feels that it's very sus to get to know people. Hmm. Isn't school the best setting? Yeah, you will regret saying this in the future, you know. Yeah, <laughs> actually school, right, is the best time to get to know all sorts of people. The person can join like clubs where she can find the mech. Okay, for example, uh, she's, she wants like handsome guy. You know what's the best club to join? Soccer. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I mean? Yes. She's kind of like, she has the world in her hands, but uh-huh. she just chooses to close her eyes. <laughs> To be honest, I I don't know why she's so apprehensive about like just making better friends in school and then seeing where this can go about like dating and things like that. But actually also, uh, why she confine herself to her only her school? You know, the best people to find uh, is from the other school, you know? Last oh. time your crushes you don't have from other school, yeah? Last time I take bus, mm. later got the other uniforms, I uh, like them, got them, oh. got them. <laughs> See, you are not confined to just your school. It doesn't even have to be school. You go to your cafe, oh. then like you fall in love with like the part-timer there. There are so many options. She I thought you were going to say the canteen back. uncle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think she is confining herself to like she think that, okay, uh, this is all I have. Then this is the only options that I have. Mm. You don't have to do that. You can go out and explore the world. I've been in a relationship for a while, but I know that you know, they have like mixer events. Then if you like spin, for example, then you can go to like Absolute Cycle to go and like, uh, they have like those dating, like Bumble, you know. <laughs> they have, then they will like go cycle together, that sort of thing, like interest groups, you know. Wow, yeah. it is quite good. Eh? Yeah, that's quite you're good. you're in right? your work wear, as in your work up wear. Eh? Mm. What is it called? Active wear. Active wear, then you look hot, right? Wow. Yeah. Probably one of the common things also is that people who have like their own personal stigma against like, you know, going out for going out to find a date mm. or going on dating apps that sort of thing they're still waiting yeah. they're always waiting for this person to just drop down from the sky organically because yeah. I used to have a friend that was something like that yes. like she will say um, okay thankfully she's married now okay but she she used to tell me that like I only want to meet somebody like organically I don't want to she finds it embarrassing yeah. to put herself out there to say that, hey I'm looking for a partner or hey I'm looking to date casually that mm. sort of thing like, I know it's a bit like, uh, sounds a bit crazy that some people actually have the idea where they think like they're the main character. Mm. Then they sit down, then somebody will just appear. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people have this, but cannot la. It's not realistic at all Yeah, la. this is not a, this is not a the... fan fiction where somebody will just approach you. So, uh, must be proactive. Yeah. You won, you go. Yeah, it's 2022. So, in conclusion, to Karen, this is a letter. This mm. is a, a, what do they call it? Um, word of advice, yes. Yes, word of advice. <laughs> Stop confining yourself. You are not in a box. You just have to get out there. You have to be more proactive. If you want something, you have to go for it. You cannot just sit down and expect yes. it to come. It's 2022. It's almost 2023. You need to hashtag girl bossy out. Yes. Okay, so this is last opportunity. Submit to Last Amanda. opportunity. <laughs> last opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lost opportunity. Submitted by A. Okay. I was classmates with this girl for a few years and we were quite close with each other from the beginning. Eventually, I caught feelings for her, but all along we treated each other as best friends. But everyone else can see that we were close to each other. We would go for one to one study sessions with each other, even though we still have our other group of friends and at times just to go eat. So throughout the first year, I was filled with much jealousy and she has quite a lot of other guy friends. But all I could do was only be jealous of her being close to other guys. But at that point of time, I was telling myself I don't have the right to be jealous because I am nothing but just a friend. So eventually, I got tired of being jealous and I would say there's like signs and signals from her that she's interested in me. But that's from my point of view and some other friend's point of view too. So one day, I YOLO and told her about my feelings. But then her answer to me was she just purely treated me as a friend and nothing else. After the confession, we actually still maintain as friends with each other. A year or two passed and I actually happened to find out that actually there's a period that she was interested in me when I was also interested in her. After finding out she was interested in me before, it affected me in a lot of different ways. Like I would actually have the thought of like, what would happen if I didn't confess? Did I do it at the wrong time and ruin the feelings? Because if not so many things would probably have been better. But at that point of time, she was actually dating. So obviously, I didn't approach her and tell her about how I feel about it. 
But right now, what I'm feeling is still the same. I would be lying if I say that I do not have any more feelings for her because a little part of me wish that something would actually happen between us. But the thing is, currently we are still friends. So if I bring up this matter, it would definitely be awkward between us and I do not want to ruin this friendship. But to be honest, I just kept thinking about the what ifs between us even though years have passed. So I was wondering if you were in my situation, what would you do? Thank you in advance. A, if I were you, I would first pitch this to a production house to make a <laughs> Taiwanese movie out of this because this is clearly a plot out of a Taiwanese romance yeah. movie. Actually, he's quite lucky that he still managed to retain this friendship because yeah. she still accepts him as a friend, did not make things awkward. Um, although he opened up to her and said that, you know, actually I like you and things like that. And... Plus he says that after that, he realised that there was a period that she was also interested in him. If I were him, I'm... Okay lah, I must make sure that she's not dating other people first. Yes. Because he says somewhere here that she's dating. I would ask her out uh, maybe one-on-one -on -one and then see where it goes from there. I think it's a good thing that he actually confessed to her yeah. verbally. You know, not the kind of thing where it's still forever in a grey area. Because I think that timing is also very important. Mm. If you wait too long sometimes to make the first move, yeah. then the other person will just assume that you are not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Timing very important. Uh, you need to be proactive no matter whether you are a guy or a girl that is pursuing somebody else. Yeah. So I guess his mistake was taking too long mm. and then losing the opportunity, right? But then it's okay. He can learn from this. He can still bounce back. Even though maybe you don't get this girl. Mm. You can learn from your mistake and then move on and make sure the next time round when you're meeting other people, you don't mm. take too long. Mm. You just need to move forward and no, don't like wait, wait anymore. Yeah, that's all. That's mm. all we can say. So after going through to these uh, confessions from Mr. and Miss Anonymous, uh, I would say that actually the problems that they face as a whole, right, is very, very common yeah. among people who wish to date. Like things like they have competing priorities. They don't know whether to choose, which I think you don't need to like choose per se. Competing priorities. They want. They don't know whether they should choose between a relationship or education, for example, which I think actually you can do both. Mm -hmm. They are also, they also have this like lack of urgency, like lack of proactivity. Like yeah. they just sit there and they, and they look at other people like they, they like then they mm, mm. I think oh, he's not going to want to date you know mm, I think mm. actually she don't like me they never ask but they just mm, I think <laughs> I think that she's dating for very long then become years oh, okay. it would be great if we were together yeah it would be great anything. yeah <laughs> or like they have unrealistic expectations yeah. of the one yeah. which I think should not be happening like. there's a lot of things to like consider mm. um, but I guess in some way it seems a bit complicated but it is necessary because mm -hmm. when you're in a relationship it's like not just about you anymore it's mm -hmm. also like about it involves another person so you really need to have a good balance of everything TBH yes. you want or you don't want you must mm -hmm. <laughs> after looking at all the confessions today if I could wrap like all these scenarios into one sentence I would say like um, if you're single like you know don't be afraid to put yourself out there to you know find the other half no matter whether you're a guy or a girl I, I just think that if you want something you need to be proactive you need to pursue it yeah that's quite silly you don't have to be too stressed about it you just don't have to see like dating as like too serious I mean you are looking for something serious if that's what you want but don't take it to don't be too hard on yourself you can still go out there and like Try Your to friends. enjoy the process. Mm. With that said, thank you very much for watching this episode of Zula Answers and thank you Hello Love for making this video possible. If you are in need of some relationship advice or you want to have some tips on navigating your love life or you just don't know where to begin, you can check Hello Love out on their Instagram page. For more information, you can click the link in the description box down below. And as always, if you have any confessions or thoughts on the stories today, you can let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! Bye.